ladies, gentlemen, and serum of all ages, it's time to get wicked. I mean, the wicked, sorry. One of the more unique parts of No Rest for the Wicked is its housing and town system, which at first can seem fully out of left field and a little bit forced, but the more that you actually respect this mechanic and look into it, you put effort and actual time into it, the more rewarded you will find yourself being. First things first, let's just talk about the houses. After you beat the second proper boss of the main story, a big pop-up will happen, telling you that you can now purchase a house in the town. There are various houses across the town itself, but my personal favorite, both for convenient location and its actual inner layout, is this one here right in the town square. When you first buy a house, it is fully empty, but you can place furniture and any kind in here, including storage boxes that can hold either 20 of any item or 30 consumables each as you upgrade your town at least to unlock those, which means that you can have storage that is only limited by your ability to create chests to store things, because there's definitely enough space for a lot of chests in each of these houses. The other main thing that you can do with player housing is general decor, though the pure aesthetics are of course a bit quite light this early in early access, and then you can also buy the various crafting stations from the maker and then place them within your home to have all of them located nicely and closely together, right beside all your various storage chests. These stations also all unlock at rank 2 of their respective vendor, though, so you don't actually need to buy these for your house, but it is an option that you have. The only thing that I would say that the home is absolutely required for is just storage space long term as it is the proper solution to it. Another fun fact about the homes, though, is that you can sell them back whenever you want for the exact price that you spent on them in the first place to get a full refund. This means that you can check out the various layouts and decide which house is right for you, or you could even get the cheapest one to begin with and slowly work your way up if you want to. As well, worth noting though, you can own multiple houses. So if you do really enjoy the game, you'll probably have all of them long term regardless. Past that then, let's move into the larger town itself and the upgrades that you can do here. There are two categories here at the Maker, really. The first are travel connectors, things like opening up the door at the bottom of the rookery so that you can go up from near the Whisper rather than the whole convoluted side path to get up there normally. Also making it easier to access the community chest in there. There's also an elevator that you can put there at the bottom of the rookery to make it easy to get to the top directly. There's also a stairway that you can build that connects the upper and lower parts of the northern city, and these are just sort of one and done type deals and generally take a bit less resource and also time costs than the proper mechanical system upgrade, which are the other type of thing that you can do here. Level 1 is just the base version of a vendor. Level 2 takes some more basic materials and one hour of time passing to upgrade them, and level 3 takes some bit further area materials and then four hours of time passing. Neat trick here, and the only reason that I've actually managed to see all the max level crafting stuff this early, the time passing on this functions based on your device's clock. So start the timer on these, close your game, turn off the automatic time settings on your PC, move your clock ahead four hours, launch the game, and then bam, they're done. That said, because it is quite an investment to actually upgrade each of these facilities, I thought I should show you what you actually get. The general assorted goods vendor gets some really higher grade materials, he doesn't have unlimited stock of anything by any means, and from what I can tell, his stock is at least partially randomized player to player, so you won't have exactly what I do probably, but do keep in mind here that at grade 3, some of his items are literally only able to be found in the Serum Crucible, which is the sort of post-game of early access. The clothiers then sell you a new set of gear and recipes for new gear as well to craft at both ranks of upgrade, which isn't bad either. The blacksmith sells more weapons and armor, as well as creating blueprints for some bonus as well. Worth noting, any blueprint that is unlocked at the rank 3 of the vendor will be a grade 3 weapon or armor when you craft it, which is actually extremely far along the upgrade path compared to items you just find in the open world generally, and because these make common items, you can then craft them on repeat using materials from Serum Crucible runs, and then enchant them over and over until you get a perfect set of stats, which is sort of the intended long-term goal of the crafting system really. On which note, there is also the Enchanter, who gets a full-on building at rank 3, as well as selling a significantly expanded inventory of runes for applying rune skills to weapons, and also sells a couple of other types of staves and some blueprints too. The list of bonus runes for sale here is quite cool, with my personal favorite on the list being Blink, which as it sounds is just a straight up teleport. Then we also have the Construction Shop, which also becomes a full-on building at rank 3. He sells better furniture, including storage with bigger compartments to put in your home, and he also has some blueprints, including spears, which is pretty fun in itself too. On top of that, all these locations also get stations to process lower grade material sources into somewhat higher grade ones too, so that is worth keeping in mind as that is where they are located. Then the final main station to talk about here is Gordon's Cooking Shop, with the first upgrade to his stall, turning it into a full-on building that has an oven in it. This is important because it allows you to make more advanced meals than just the normal fire pits, and he also sells not just higher grade ingredients, but also recipes for each upgrade, and just full-on food of higher grade if you want to just straight up buy them. With the current highest rank of food being available as well, being really quite solid here. With this example here being a massive amount of healing and a large chunk of bonus maximum health for a long duration as well. So this is it's all just definitely really worth pursuing, especially as a lot of his recipes are makeable 
with his own inventory stock, which means that gold can take care of pretty much all this for you quite easily. And the final interesting building of note is the inn, which is run by Gordon's wife. From the description of it when upgrading, I sort of get the feeling that there will be extra side quests or something like that that only unlock as you upgrade the inn, at least in the full game, but that doesn't seem to be a mechanic right now. For the meantime, the inn literally offers a place for you to rest, and as you upgrade it, it gets more places to rest, which theoretically makes sense for multiplayer when you can have up to four players, which is the next major update. This is an actual mechanic as well though, which is important to mention, where if you log out, if you are in a proper bed like this and stay out of the game for four hours, you get a buff when you come back that counts you as rested. So there's actually a big proper reason that you should consider getting this building that is probably not immediately apparent to most players, though also worth mentioning, I believe you can get beds for your personal house to use similarly as well, so it's sort of up to how you want to upgrade your things, whether you want to focus on your own house or the town as a whole, personally. Then finally, I didn't want to put this too early because I imagine only a few people really care this deeply, but let's have a good look at the layout of each housing option that we have. For 25 silver, we have the homestead here in the town square. This one is essentially just one large room with a slightly elevated lip in the middle. It is very connected and lovely and together, really, it's my personal favorite. For 30 silver, just up the hill from here, you can get the manor, the most expensive house currently, and this is much larger, essentially a couple of circular rooms beside each other with a lot of verticality, and this definitely has much more space than the homestead, but the layout itself is much more split up and spread out, and it just makes it feel much smaller, to me at least personally. Then we have the Roost, our final home. This one is only 20 silver to buy, so the cheapest of the bunch, and arguably the least floor space as a result too, though the layout is quite nice for it, just essentially being two large rectangles on top of each other. That just about does it for today then everyone, a full look at both the housing and town upgrade systems and no rest for the wicked, as well as a look at the full effects of all current upgrades, and a couple of tips for how to make it easier to achieve as well. It is quite clear to me that they intend to add further ranks onto the system for the existing vendors and options, but probably also even full additions into it as well as the game is built up more. But this is everything that we have right now. Honestly, the system is quite quaint. It fits the ARPG nature of the game, but it does definitely feel a little bit awkward, at least early in the game, if you're just really wanting to fight enemies and experience bosses and stories, and you're just sort of getting blocked because you didn't go out and get the innkeeper from his side quest and then farm materials and then upgrade a stall to give you a solid food source. So basically, this is just how all the stuff works. This is how it all exists, and this is genuinely how good it can be for each one if you interact with each one specifically. So use that information as you will, you can choose to use it, or you can choose not to, it's totally your choice for your own game. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye